We do expect that, you know, when you have different, what should I say, big national events, big international type events, we always do hear from our entertainers and musicians. Tell me about the thinking behind Outbreak. The thinking behind it um, was born out of the this current situation. We actually did it like last minute. Um, we were just observing the happenings of, you know, the world, the media, what's going on. At the time, it hadn't reached Jamaica yet, but we were very much aware of it, and we said, you know, let's do a song that's speaking to this. Um, it was actually Craig that came up with the idea, because the song is with me, myself, Craig, and Leo from Frankie Music Production. And Craig wrote the hook, and he, he played it for me, and I was like, Wow, I really love this. This song is really speaking to what's happening right now. It really is something that we need to talk. We need to really start talking about because people are not talking about the happenings of what. It's not just about the virus, but you know, you know, um, what you call it, climate, climate change, all that. Everything that that is affecting us right now, and that's pretty much what gave birth to the song itself. So, are you hoping then that people come away with? perhaps a deeper understanding of our, our interconnectivity and, and just what's happening to the, to the globe, to the planet? Yes, for sure, because you know what? Um, we tend to, you know what? I think this is an eye-opener. This whole thing is an eye-opener to us because we sat down, this, we, sat, we all sit down at home and we see all these things happening in other places, faraway places. I remember in particular, you know, when this all took, when it all started, maybe about, it really started jumping up in the media in about December. And I was home watching it on TV, but nobody was really paying it much mind. And until we said, okay, some Chinese people are coming to Jamaica, and we need to watch how they, how um, they, they are, are borders and them coming in. But a lot of persons thought of the whole matter as a faraway issue. It's far away from here. It's never going to happen. But now we have, what, 143 people confirmed here. So, yeah, it's something that we need to start talking about, something we need to start paying attention to, and we need to start working towards making our future better for our generation and the next generation and generations to come. Based on the fact that you said you've been following this from December, so you have been seeing it spread and move from country to country and have such serious effects in countries like the United States, in Italy and so on. Do you ever stop and say to yourself, what is going on? You know, this is a real life movie unfolding. Yeah, it felt like that movie that everybody's talking about now, um, Contagion, that's the one that came to mind. Um, because you're literally watching this thing happen before your eyes. Up to now, I'm still, Miss Stella tweet on Twitter right now and say, I can't believe we're actually living in an actual global pandemic. This isn't something that you expect to um, experience in your lifetime. Um, so it's, it's frightening. It's, uh, it, 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 it is an eye-opener, but it's also frightening because, you know, these are actual people's lives that are being lost. And so many people are affected globally and, and locally. We have five people dead. How about how it's affected, for instance, young entertainers and artists? Normally, when artists drop a new song, you're looking forward to seeing them perform it live at the next show they're on. But Ooh. you don't even know when you're going to be able to perform exactly, this in front of an audience. Exactly, because it has changed so much. I've been talking to... You know, friends of mine in the industry, like, you know, uh, the more established artists like, you know, my friends, Alba Rosie and Julian Marley and all of them, and they're all so severely affected because they all have to cancel their tours. Mind you, we make our money from touring, not just um, from sales, but, you know, touring is the big money-making um, or the, the biggest source of income for most artists. And for upcoming acts, this is how we gain exposure, you know, 
So it has affected us all negatively, but there are some positive takeaways. Um, even though it's a dark time, there is some light. I realize now that you know people are now starting to really take or make use of social media and platforms available online. People are starting to explore those options, and we need more of that. You know, virtual concerts, virtual this, virtual that. So it's something that may may eventually maybe give birth to some form of new age um, me, um, entertainment. It, it, it's going to give birth to something like that, I think. But um, it still affects us both ways, most, more negative than positive. Have you watched any of the, the virtual concerts yet? Or they been ah, in... Yes, I've been a part of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have been a part of them. Give me your um, experience from being on that side of it. You know what? If this internet service good, it good. That's the biggest. <laughs> that's, the, that's the most important part of it. Um, the internet service has to be good for it to be really good. Because I have experienced, I've I've had bad experiences doing it in the last couple of weeks. You know, since this whole thing has been going on, I've been doing live feeds and Instagram live with other persons, and I find my my feed keeps dropping, stuff like that, and. That's the that's the problem. That's the issue with it. But in terms of the benefit, the benefit is that I'm reaching out to um, people who I would normally reach out to. As a matter of fact, just the other day, I ended up on the Instagram live with Cardi B's producer. You know, oh. um, what are the chances? Yes. Exactly. On a regular day, I don't think those people would have the time to sit around on their phones, but because of this whole you have to stay home thing, people are now starting to make use of social media. So they start to learn or meet new people who they wouldn't, well, they wouldn't have normally met on another day. You know what I mean? I'm all the way in Jamaica. What are the chances of me meeting Cardi B's producer yeah. online? Yeah. You know? What is this? Tell me what is this? What is this that's happening to us? People, them are born, said and want for me to save you. I know for them to understand that they are the creators. Really need for makeup plan, cause things could be much greater. Everybody's stuck on this selfish behavior. Tell me when, when, when. So, so if you're in a concert, as you said, and they. Um, and and the internet is weak and the feed keeps dropping. That that must be extremely frustrating. How do you respond? How do you deal with that? Ah, uh, I mean, what can I do anyway? <laughs> what can I do? Um, it the, that responsibility um, lies with the um, internet service providers. We have two main two main ones being digital and flow. Um, I think what both companies need to do now is to really look into their um, services and see where they're, la- where they're lacking and see where the, the faults are and try to fix them because this is going to give birth to something else. Like I mentioned before, the whole virtual concert, the virtual this, virtual that, is going to give um, birth to a new age of um, entertainment or a new way to entertain. So those things, they have to tighten up those things. Even the whole working from home thing, I'm pretty sure a lot of um, companies and you know, the older employees who are used to clocking in are now realizing that there are employees that you don't necessarily, they don't, you don't need them coming into the office every day. They can work from home. This can work, provided that the Internet service is good and they conduct, there's a way of, um, there's a way of um, uh, supervising them while they're working from home, you know, things like that. Now, say the internet is good now, so you're doing the virtual concert. Now, compare that for me to act an actual performance, because performing in front of real people, there's an energy and an electricity oh, yes. that a live performance sure. gives you. Do you get anything similar to that when you're doing, say, Instagram Live and, and people are checking in and commenting? Provided that the internet service is good, um, it can be good. It, it, you know what? It's a completely different experience. Yes, I, I totally agree with you on that. But it can still be very good because I have watched people do Instagram Live um, concerts, uh, mini concerts, so to speak, whether it be an acoustic set or whatever, and they set up their songs properly and hook it up to the Instagram feed. And it works. People are, people are sending in their heart emojis and, you know, the, the, the comments are flowing. It still works the same. 
It's just that the energy is not the kind of energy you get in an actual stage, at an actual stage performance with people there in real life. Um, I've seen a few, as a matter of fact, Bob Marley Museum, um, the Bob Marley Foundation did a, did a Facebook Live show before all of this went down. Um, I, was, I am one of the Bob Marley 75th Celebration ambas- Ambassadors for this year, and we were part of the virtual concert that they did for the launch on, uh, I don't remember what date it was, some, some early February and they did a live feed in the in the in the museum, and it was very very good. The, like I said, it's different from when you are performing on stage in front of an audience, but the response still remains the same. If that makes sense, because people will still have them good comments, some will have them bad comments, but comments and responses nonetheless. It's just it may not be the kind of energy that you get on stage and in a real event, but. It's still good. I always wonder, though, when I'm watching this, and you mentioned earlier that touring is how most of our artists make their money, not mm-hmm. by selling records or anything like that. So when you're doing virtual concerts, how, how do you make money? Do you make money off it? You know, that's, and this this goes right back to where, you know, I, should, I wonder if I should have a copyright them so may. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm thinking that this whole experience that the whole world is experiencing right now, the, the fact that should something like this happen again, God forbid it happens again. Um, you need to be in a position where you can work, you can still earn, even though not being on the tours. And to do that, you know, the whole virtual concerts and stuff, they, they have to figure out a way to do it. Um, I can use for an example. I like to watch other people and take um, and take the what they do and you know use it to create something else. So taking away from the Kanye West concert that was kept here in Jamaica. He had a whole website where he posted the link to stream live, but that was for free. What if they come up with one where you have to pay money just like you're going to a concert? So, I mean, possibilities are endless. I don't see why it's impossible. So um, the, 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 the computer techs know how to do that. So I can see how they can do something like that. Okay, but we're not there yet. Right now, there, right yeah. now they're for free. People just, I guess, trying yeah. to continue trying to, to engage the fans. Yeah, you're trying to, you're trying to remain um, visible, even though, you know, we can't be visible. Yeah. Have you, have you performed this song in one of the virtual concerts yet? No, not yet. Um, it was done so very recently that we did not get the chance to do that yet. But I'm, sure, I'm certain we will at some point in time. The song is with myself, Craig, and um, Leah, and they're, they live they live different places from where I do. Currently, I'm in lockdown, so I, I'm not sure how we'll be able to do that just yet. But okay. The beauty um, of the internet, though. That, yeah, that's, I mean, I don't see how that's impossible. We should be able to do something. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so is there any particular line in this song that, that really speaks to you in terms of the situation we're now in? Yes, in my verse, of course, that's the top of my verse. <laughs> of course. Um, my verse goes... Um, com- it's let me just read it out to you. And, and then like, give me a little acapella. Yeah, of course. I can. All right. Right. So it goes, comes like a hurricane. It knock we down, first wave. Who can we blame but ourselves? Real shame. The sacrifice we'll make to fix it lame. Every year we come round, we we'll catch a fever. And when it's a tour, you wonder how you know no visa. And if we're not careful, then we might as well get a, we might go get a feature. So take it serious. We need more believers. Give me a little acapella now. You want acapella? Okay. Yeah, man. Comes like a hurricane. And now we right down first wave. Who can we blame but ourselves? Real shame. The sacrifice we make to fix it lame. Every year we come around, we catch a fever. And when it's a tour, you wonder who you're not no visa. And if we're not careful, then we might just get a feature. So take it serious, we need more believers. Nice. Thank you. Comes like a hurricane. And now we're right down first wave. Who can we blame but ourselves? Real shame. The sacrifice we make to fix it late.
Can you tell me what is really happening? Are you paying attention to the problem? Outbreak. Can you give me your take? I see everybody looking the other way. Not paying attention to what's happening today. 